Alrighty, well, hi everybody, and uh, once and um, once again, it's cast time. And um, normally I'd be at work. Normally I'd be at work, but uh, I just went ahead and called in. Um, once again, for those that don't know, um, as of Saturday, um, I had a major arm injury. It just woke up hurting like hell. Um, up until today, it's um, it's mostly recovered. But I'll I'll go ahead and talk more. I'll talk more about it later. Um, but anyway. I actually did have, I actually did have the cast mostly set up. I've done this before, but at the last minute, I just said, "Ah, hell with it," so, and then just decided to go ahead and throw on a throw on a nature walk video instead. So this time around, um, this is going to be Upper Coal Creek, uh, Upper Coal Creek Trail, West Trailhead, and hell, I as it is one of my nasty habits, I keep forgetting to, I keep forgetting to make. I keep forgetting to find out where exactly Upper Coal Creek is. I want to say Washington, but here, let me, let me go ahead and get a, yeah, it's in, uh, Bellevue, Washington. Okay. So, but anyway, um, once again, just going to do a nature hike video, um, and then I'll just go ahead and, uh, and then that, that's another reason too. I don't really have a whole lot today. Um, maybe like a couple, two or three things, and that's about it. So, was it really worth trying to put get all the visuals together and all that to get the cast video all set up? So, I thought I'd just go ahead and throw on a nature hike instead. So, let's. And I still need to kind of sound check this. So, I forgot to do it earlier. Okay, just a shade loud. So let me go ahead and turn it down just a smidge. Okay, but to start with, um, just like usual, I went ahead and um, I did my Darkest Dungeon stream. And and like I had been doing, I, I started off by doing PvP. And oh god, did it suck. It just... I mean, as... Along with the typical matchmaking issues that's been going on ever since I first started doing this, you know, where pitting me, you know, where it's matching, where it's matching me, a low-level scrub, up against like the cream of the crop, like the top, the top level players that could uh, easily steamroll me. Um, along with those that I end up having a bail out of immediately, um, I've also just been plagued by really bad RNG, like um, just. My opponents scoring a lot of critical hits on me. It deals uh, double damage, um, basically for all intents and purposes, one-shotting my guys. And then, yeah, I'm kind of. And for what it's worth, this video here, it came out about three years ago, and there's this really kind of this purple haze around it. But I should probably explain a little bit. Um. I've, I've seen it behind the scenes of how he does these uh, nature hikes. He's got he's it's it's practic it's probably what I'd call a camera cannon. Like it's a big old monstrous uh, camera. It's it. I'm sorry if this doesn't make any sense, but it's basically mounted on his body. Like I said, like I the the size of the camera he uses, it's practically a cannon. Just a big old. Big old black cannon and all that. So he can't really walk very fast. He's he's basically he's moving like a tank. And it almost looks like the footage has slowed down. Yeah, it's like the people are almost like walking in slow motion. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna try adjusting that. Yeah, it's set it it's set at normal speed. And sorry for the white line or whatever else is showing up on the screen. Okay. 
Okay, I'll, I'll just, I'll set it back. But like I said, this video here came out three years ago, so he's probably not quite the pro that he is now, but, uh, I know, uh, but this, the, unlike a lot of these other nature hike videos that I've looked at, um, this one here, there's at least as of about five or so minutes that I checked this out, there's no edits. Um, the last cast I did, he was, um, a lot of the videos I was looking at, he was teleporting all over the place. Like every, every five, ten seconds, it would, uh, it would, uh, do a fade cut to another part of scenery. And every ten seconds, it would keep doing this over and over. Like, I mean, I mean, that's not a, that's not a nature hike at that point. You're just, you're just basically a wizard teleporting around. So, um, uh, but anyway, back to the subject at hand, um, but yeah, either, either I'm getting, uh, I'm getting monsters that are, pre that are constantly critting me again, um, dealing double damage and then basically one shotting all my guys or, um, what are the, what are the healers that I use in my group, uh, called an occultist? He, he can heal, he can heal my guys, but it's for a, it's for a random number, very inconsistent, like, uh, he heals from... He can heal as many as much as 24 points of damage, and he and he can go as low as zero. Which uh, on at least two occasion, two occasions, that's what happened. And um, in those situations, there it's kind of it's kind of my policy to whenever whenever this guy heals one of my guys for zero, then I bail out of, I bail out of the match immediately. So, you know, just, I basically lost a turn. Now, unless I'm, unless I'm way ahead in the match or something, or unless I'm, like, totally dominating my opponent, which I can't remember the last time that's happened, then, yeah, I just, I quit the match immediately. So, on at least two of those, two of those matches, that's what ended up happening. I just ended up bailing out of the battle. And I think um, one of those that I bailed out of was an even match. Like me and my opponent were neck and neck, but even then, if he uh, if I get a zero heal, I just bail out of there immediately. And I'm gonna take a drink of some Arizona green tea. And in case anyone wants to ask, well, why do you have him in your team? Well, cause um, the uh, occultist is also my debuffer. Um, and sometimes he's also my, um, he's my puller. Like, sometimes like, he's got a spell that if you, you can cast on somebody in the back line and, um, you'll pull them two positions towards the front, making that person easier to hit. And plus, in the, the back of the party, that's where you usually have your healers and buffers. So, if you could, um, if you could pull that back line guy up towards the front, he can't use those healing abilities because because most uh, abilities in this game have position requirements. And for the most part, most healing spells can only be done in the back line. So, again, if you if you pull him up towards the front, he can't heal. So, that's why I have the Occultus in there. Secondly, he's also my team debuffer. Because um, a, uh, a lot of characters in this game have what's called a dodge rating. It's basically, it's kind of like what you'd see in Final Fantasy or something. You know, it's just, uh, they, there's a percentage chance to dodge attacks. So a lot of times I, I need my attacks to land. So my occultist, he has an, he has a spell that can remove that dodge, that can remove that dodge rating. Meaning my attacks can actually land on the guy now. So again, I have to have him in my group. Oh, wow. So he does edit. Okay. I'm guessing since since uh, that blue sign over there, this is like some kind of landmark or stop. I'm guessing what he probably did is he just he needed to stop and take a rest. Because once again, that the camera that this guy uses is almost the size of a freaking cannon. So that's a that's a big old heavy piece of equipment right there. So I'm pretty sure 
whenever you see an edit like that, he'd probably stop to take a break. So, but yeah, anyway, but anyway, that's why I have to have the occultist in my group. Because, oh, and there's also another statistic called PROT. Um, short for protection, it's basically damage reduction. Well, some of my, some of my opponents, they might have a prot rating that's so high that I, I kind of need to remove that damage reduction off of them. Again, my occultist provides that. And then, um, and then also, you know, there's another mechanic in this game called marking. Um, a lot of occultist abilities will mark a target, uh, meaning they take a, usually either 50 or 100% more damage from various other attacks. Um, one of the other guys in my group, the Hound Master, he has a, he has a single target dog attack that I think deals double damage to mark targets. So, so yeah, like I said, so it's one of the reasons why I have to have an occultist in there. So, but like I, like I said, if I, um, it's kind of a policy of mine. Um, unless I'm way ahead in the battle, which again, I can't recall, I can't recall a single time that's happened. Um, if this occultist heals any of my guys for zero, I bail out of the battle immediately, and that's another thing too. The only time I use this heal is when um is when one of my other guys is at death's door, meaning his health is at zero. So it's I'm not so I'm not being whiny. I'm not being whiny about it. <laughs> he's not healing for 24. <laughs> Just one point of healing will work. So that's why I take such a big issue with me healing for zero. Just one point will work, because. Again, like I said yesterday, when a character gets brought down to zero health, he's put at death's door. And as long as as long as his health is at zero, the next any attack, even if it's damage over time, that gets inflicted on him while he's in this state can kill him. But if you can get him if you can get him out of zero health, then it takes him out of death's door. So in that context, even one single point of health takes them out of the takes them out of the door so and that also means if you only have one if you only have one single life point left it doesn't matter how much damage somebody does on you they could crit you for 99 and it's still only going to deal one point of damage and take you back to zero so so one so in this game here you don't need to have your players at full health at all times. Because unlike most other MMOs, or, M or MMOs, and unlike most other most other games, um, your characters don't die the very moment they hit zero. Again, they're put at what's called Death's Door, which is the next hit is going to have a percentage chance to kill him. Oh, oh shit, he's going to try to cross that thing. Frickin' Log Bridge. Huh? Nah, that don't surprise me. That don't surprise me. Taking the safer route. Remember, he's got a huge camera on his chest. He, yeah, he, it's gonna be hard as hell trying to balance on that log bridge when you got a big old, when you're basically carrying around a cannon. So again, I'm not, so that, so, so yeah, I'm not being nitpicky when I'm saying that, uh, you know, you know, eh, my occultist didn't heal for 24. No, it's even one single point of healing will work. So yeah, that's why I take, take such issue with, uh, getting a zero heal. Cause again, I'd be happy with just one single hit point of healing. So, but anyway, um, after having such bad luck, with PvP, I decided to go ahead and just do some PvE content. 
which went a lot better. I think I did like two or three runs. Um, they all went nice and smooth. Um, got got some pretty good hauls off of those since uh, since my my town is fully and one hundred percent upgraded. I don't need I don't need um I don't need to pick up any upgrade components while running these dungeons. So I could just leave those and use and fill up the rest of my inventory with like gold and gems. So just basically making that money. So I'll I'll probably talk more on that later. But anyway, um it seems uh I spent about fifteen minutes just talking about Darkest Dungeon and as well as this nature hike. But like I said, it's some some of the other nature hike videos that I've looked at, they're there's way too many edits on them, so I really can't use those because I want to see somebody hiking, not teleporting. So, but anyway, I gotta, I'm gonna move along. Um, yeah, I'm gonna take another drink. Hold on. So, what other thing? Um, uh, what other thing I watched? Um, they're Amoeba Records. They came out with another their latest episode. Um, this time, uh, some girl named Nan Nancy Peluso. Uh, never heard of her, but um, I'm gonna. This is gonna be kind of related yet unrelated, but I'm not a nationalist. I don't, you know, I don't think our country is way better than every other country in the world. Um, I'm not a racist either. I mean. I've said this before from time to time. My favorite genre of music is jazz. So, no, I'm not not a racist. But, you know, Amoeba Records is an American, you know, it's an American company. Um, it's based in America. Um, the employees, presumably, are all Americans. You know, so... But yet, though, there's been episodes where... Or, let me, let me explain a bit. Um... The way um the way what's in my bag works is um they'll they'll follow a certain musician around with a camera um you know checking you know checking out all the stuff they're buying they'll follow them around shopping and all that and then uh they'll sit on a couch and they'll do an interview about what they what they bought and why you know sketching out a little bit of context about the albums they got but anyway but some of these episodes. Don't bring in these musicians that don't speak a word of English. You know, they're Spanish or Swedish or whatever. But, and then they'll, um, so I can't understand what they're saying. Now, sometimes you get lucky on some of these and they'll actually, they'll actually show subtitles. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Like I said, but this... This, this video is a little bit purple hazy. But, you know, and then, um, but in lots of other times, so they'll just put in the comments, turn on the closed captioning to understand what they're saying. Like, you know, that's kind of a dick move. You know, just, again, putting, just putting, for, you know, putting foreigners on the couch that don't speak any English at all, and they just, Oh, well, just turn the subtitles on. It's kind of kind of a douchey move, you know. I just because it's not like uh, I mean, subtitles pretty much kills the immersion, you know. Because I'm spending more time reading the subtitles than I am actually watching the musician. So, yeah, I guess the technology wasn't quite there three years ago. Looks like it's, uh, I think I said this earlier, too. It looks like it's a bit slowed down. But, um, this time around, though, they, they, um, they actually picked the right one. The, I mean, Nathy, uh, she, she's actually bilingual. And then, even cooler, um, she would, um, she would talk about the stuff she bought in both Spanish and English. But, like I said, right when the video started... 
Um, she started talking in Spanish. I'm like, oh shit, not one of these. So off to the next video. Oh, all of a sudden she started talking in English. I'm like, holy shit, she's bilingual. So yeah, I basically stuck around for the whole video then. And then, and then this, this, uh, this made, this made sense in my mind at the time. I don't know if it's going to translate well to the spoken word, but, um, uh, and some time ago, there was this, um, there was this other episode. It's like this white American girl. Um, I can't remember her name, but I looked her up on the wiki. She's, she just does like good old white American pop music. But yet, uh, nearly all the albums she was picking up were Cuban. And again, she's not born uh, Cuban, um, Hispanic, like, like nearly all of it. And for, for some reason, but I, but like I said, it didn't really, you know, so it just, it felt like she was more of a fangirl. So it, which I, at least in my mind, it didn't really, it didn't really make much sense. I couldn't draw a connection. I mean, especially considering I don't, and I don't think she spoke any Spanish. Like I said, it's, like I said, I looked her up and uh, she's an American pop artist. You know, good old English speaking pop music. But now, you know, fast forward to, Nancy Peloso, who's, um, I think she's, you know, I think she's, bi you know, she's bilingual, and, um, but yet, nearly all of her, um, I think nearly all of her music choices were actually American. So I, I found that to be pretty interesting. I think there was maybe one, maybe two records she picked up that were actually Brazilian. Brazilian and, um, and it's kind of a little nice touch. The uh, the two albums she uh, she picked out were uh, were actually on this uh, Brazilian Doomer playlist that I used used to listen to fairly often back in the day. So I thought that was pretty cool. But yeah, most most all of her other records were you know kind of big surprise. I think she had Doobie Brothers. Um, she had some John Coltrane. She had some uh, she had like American jazz music. Um, trying to think too. I'm trying to think what else she had, but yeah, but like I said, the vast majority of the albums she was picking out were all American. Christopher Cross, that was another one. So yeah, like but like I said, big surprise though. You know, because in these other episodes too, I just remembered. Um, a lot of these foreigners that, oh, I guess he decided to take another break. You know, all these foreigners, they were, you know, they're, they're picking these albums that were native to whatever country they lived in. Like, they didn't have any, like, any American records, like, at all. So, I've never heard of them. You know, it's, I was kind of saying, you know, like, Amoeba, this, you know, why do you have these people on your show? You know, they're... They're, say... They're Mexican artists. Um, you know... You know... Buying, you know, they're Mexican artists buying Mexican albums. And then they're, they're... They're speaking Spanish. You know, and then they're telling us, just turn the subtitles on. You know, it, what's... This is, you know, not much point in me watching this. You know, and then, but like I said, I think Amoeba kind of got it right this time. They actually, that's what I was trying to say. They actually found a good middle ground. You know, they brought in an artist that was bilingual. And then on top of that, and like I said a few moments ago, a lot of the records she was picking up were actually English, were actually American. You know, John Coltrane, Doobie Brothers, Christopher Cross.
You know, again, I didn't, I, I think I did a quickie look, look on her, um, on Nathy's, uh, on week, Nathy's, uh, wiki page, and, um, most of the music she plays are, um, are, are Spanish, but she actually did have a little bit of, uh, she had a few, uh, English songs and or albums in there as well, so... So yeah, um, looks like uh, Amoeba finally got it right this time. But uh, I'm, I'm sorry if this doesn't make any sense at all. But like I said, in my mind, it, I kind of have it figured out. But when, when trying to talk it out, it doesn't always work. So. Yeah, it, this video is kind of laggy. But like I said, this uh, video was made like three years ago, so I'm guessing the technology wasn't quite there. Heck, I don't even know. Uh, I don't even know how far back Pro Art goes, or Pro Art Pro Art Inc. I think that's the channel. So chances are, this uh, this might be one of the uh, one of the earlier videos that they did, like or I should say, uh, like when Pro Art Inc. was first started. Like I said, it's kind of kind of purple hazy and it's kind of laggy. But like I said, when I first watched like the first five minutes of this, there was like no edits on it. So yeah, I just decided to go with this. I think there was something else I was wanting to say about that. I can't remember what. But I think, um, kind of a recap, the, um, the white American girl, that's like total 100% all American, like total American pop music and all that, but, uh, choosing like nothing but Cuban and Hispanic records, I could have drawn no connection there whatsoever. So I'm guessing that she, she, and, um, I'm led to believe that she only speaks English and nothing else. Whereas with Nathy, She's she's bilingual, so so uh, all the uh, all the American records that she was grabbing, it just made more sense. So like I said, the white American struck me as just more of a fangirl than anything, because I drew no connection to American pop music and and the uh, the the Cuban and Hispanic music she was picking up. So I huh. But yet, you know, but with, you know, with Nasty speaking both English and Spanish, it just, for some reason, it just made more sense. So, I, I think that's the message I'm trying to get across. I have a heck of a time trying to put it into words. Anyway, I'm going to take another drink. But yeah, look at how they move. It's like you're moving a little bit slower. Yeah, it looks like you're going in slow motion. So, yeah. Like I said, just making the most of what I got. Uh, but otherwise, I'm just going to go ahead and call it good there. Um, I believe I said all the things that I wanted to say. Um, sorry if a lot of it didn't make any sense at all. So, so it might have been just pointless rambling. Um, but but otherwise, um, um, yeah. But thanks for uh, tuning in and listening to me, everybody. I appreciate that. And, um, and then tomorrow and Friday... I will be at work, so you won't be hearing from me again until Sunday morning. So, thanks again for dropping by, everybody. I appreciate that, and I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.